And welcome back to Cottage Talk. I'm Russ Goldman. Joining me right now is Emilio Donnell, better known as the Foam Shadow, and Foam legend Rob Wilson. In this episode, we're going to preview the upcoming match Friday night for Foam at Craven Cottage against Bournemouth, the return of Scott Parker. Obviously, we're going to talk about that, but we're also going to talk about how does Foam win this match and what they really need to do to get all three points. That, to me, is the most important thing to talk about in regards to this match, it still is only three points. I know it's a big deal media wise and, and fans wise too, but if you look at it, it still was really about all three points. Anyways, let's get to it. Foam Shadow, how are you doing tonight? Hello there, no shadow, different room, no shadow tonight, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's look, previewing a you know, top of the table clash, right? Former manager, you know, against you know, Marco Silva. I don't, don't think many people have predicted Bournemouth maybe to be doing as well as they are. I think probably right. teams thought, well, why would he leave a club like Fulham to join Bournemouth? And clearly, obviously, he's, he's making a mark there. They're doing well. They've sort of got off a little bit stuttered in recent weeks. But overall, I think he's done a good job with that squad of players. And, you know, it's it's going to be a very intriguing game tomorrow night. There's obviously the, uh, the you know, the challenge of having a former manager. I don't know what reception he's going to get. I don't think he's going to get the warmest of receptions. I think you're going to see a, maybe a mixed crowd, Rob. I don't know what you think. Some people will will applaud him. He got us promoted to the into the into the Premier League. We shouldn't forget that. And, you know, right. last season, let's let's put that to bed. But I think you're going to get quite a mixed and muted atmosphere tomorrow night at the ground. Well, that's very interesting. I, I wanted to talk to both of you about that. First of all, welcome to, back to the show, Rob. And uh, I know you're looking forward to this match. And Emilio just got me started because I was already ready to talk to you about guys about what do you think the reaction is going to be at Craven Cottage? Do you think it's going to be mixed like Emilio said? What, what are your thoughts, Rob? Yeah, good evening, Emilio. Good evening, Russ. Um, yes, um, yeah, I, I think, like Emilio, I think uh, I think it will be mixed. I think there's a many, uh, you know, it's going to be a full house. So, you know, 20 odd thousand, there'll be, there'll probably be 10,000 who will clap him. Uh, yeah. And rightly so. I mean, I, I, you know, any previous manager or I always think whatever he's done in the past, he's, he has represented the club, whether it's good or That's bad. Right. I, and, and most of it were good. Uh, it's only the circumstances how he left the club I was a bit disappointed mm. with and the way he went around it. Um, there may have been things behind the scene we don't we're not privy to, but yeah, I think we should um we should applaud him, but I think there'll be uh, there'll be many thousands within the group that probably won't applaud him. But um, you know, he he took us took us up and down and um, you know, it was just the manner how he left the club was more disappointing. But it's a very intriguing game on a Friday night. I wish it had been a Saturday afternoon. I probably could have got down. <laughs> I could have got down there Friday night. It's a little bit more difficult, but um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a sellout. It's a sky game. Both teams were in good form until this sort of last 10 days. So, you know, it's interesting. I think, I think Scott's playing the mind ball games already saying he's got a few suspensions and yeah. you don't know how he can lift his players after going two nil up with, uh, you know, 10 minutes to go. And I think he's trying to write the, uh, write mm-hmm. the headlines before it, before it, we actually go and smash them. <laughs> Very interesting, Rob. Okay. I want to go right back to you because you and uh, Gordon and Emilio, you know, listen, we we talked before the season began and I want to get your thoughts. I really haven't caught up with you in a while. So leading up to this match, how do you feel Fulham are doing compared to what you thought at the beginning of the season? Are they where you thought they would be? Obviously they're first. But do you think do you did you predict that they'd be at this point, at this juncture of the season? Yeah, I'm very much so, and I think I would have put my head on the block at the beginning of the season. I'm sure in the in the in the preseason show that I really fancied us to go and win this league. Uh, I wouldn't say fairly comfortably, but I think I would have said we would have been number one. I'm slightly disappointed we're not a few points ahead of second place, although we're ahead of third place. You know, other than a few games, Blackpool, Coventry. You know we've been we've been fairly relentless in our performances, and up until obviously the last two draws, that you know the, the the seven eight games on the chart, some of the football is mesmerising, and the goals we're scoring, um, you know, it's just second to none. It is going back many many years under Tigana, the type of football we're playing, and and better in my opinion, um, maybe not as good as the McDonald era in, in 82, 83, but uh, <laughs> hey ho. Um, but yeah, he's got a, he's got a great selection of squad. Squad rotation's been good. He seems to be rotating players. Young Cavs come back into the squad where we all yes. thought he probably wouldn't play another game before January. Everyone's saying he's 
he's leaving and this and that. And he, he obviously had COVID, he had an injury. Um, so he's come back and he, he's looked he's looked hungry. He's, uh, I've heard he's hungry in training. So fair dues, as long as he's a Fulham player and we can get something out of him, let's utilise him until he See, goes. I agree with that, Rob. I, I totally agree with that. It's funny because we've had this discussion. What do you do with a player that might be leaving – as long as he's giving you his all, utilizing, that's the way I, I feel. I, I've gone back and forth on it, but I agree with you on that. Over to you, yeah. Emilio. I want to get your thoughts. You know, you and I always talk, and we always assess. We're almost halfway mm-hmm. into the this season, okay? We're not there yet, but we're, we're getting there. Is this where you thought we would be, or better or worse? I'm curious mm-hmm. where you thought we'd be, say, in the beginning of December. Yeah, I think slightly. I think better. I think I think I predicted like top three, top four. I, I was, didn't think we have enough depth and quality there. And obviously, there was an unknown manager there around getting automatic promotion. That was always got to be the goal. But I was always a little bit more sitting on the fence, thinking top three, top four was more realistic. But you know, I think we've done well, like Rob says. You know, we're scoring goals. We're very attractive to watch. It's you know, there've been, there've been we're not dominating games all the time. You know, some games like Preston, we start very well and then we go off the boil. I think Bristol City was another game, you know, another away game where we dropped some points. We should have, you know, should have, you know, killed the game off. So to be honest, in a way, you look at the performances and where we've been. Maybe you could argue we should be further ahead. We should have more points on the board. But you know, we can't complain. We what nine points clear from third place, better goal difference. So effectively, three, at least three games, you know, in in a, you know ahead of the or for a third place team. So I think we've done better than I expected. I'm definitely enjoying the football this season, you know, and. You know, we can't complain. You know, we, we're rotating the squad, like Rob says. We've got some young talent giving opportunities. We've got Mitrovic proving what he can do best at this league and, you know, scoring for fun. And, you know, we are an attractive team to watch. You know, and unfortunately, we're not necessarily getting the credit from the media, as always. There's always the media always finding a reason to diss the club or we never get favourable comments, whether we win, lose or draw. So totally it's, agree. I, don't really, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Why? why and I, and, and I think since the introduction of Rodak and the defensively, we haven't conceded no, no right. and less right. goals than we had the first yeah, that's right. 12 games of the season. Yeah, we look more assured. Yeah, we have our yep. moments. And and, and and as much as we we, we, we knock uh, the two centre-halves, Tosin and, uh, mm. and Reem, they, they are partial. And pundits, you'll, mm. you'll yeah. listen to a game before a game, half-time. They're seeing the same things that me, you and the rest of the team do. Mm in terms of trying to step in where they shouldn't do or get enrolled, you know, just basic mistakes. If they cut them out, we would be even, mm. I mean, we've got a great defensive record already, but you yeah. know, we do let teams back into games sometimes or get chances, which gives yeah. them an impetus to, 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 to go on and try and nick a, nick a draw like Preston did by, you know, as soon as the sub came on, as soon as Evans came on for them, that changed the game mm-hmm. because he got involved. Our two centre outs were rattled and we didn't look the same team second half. Yeah, okay. and there's some common trend. Bristol City away, second half. Coventry, second half. Preston, yep. second half. So, you know, you can see there's some of these, these other opposing managers are making some tactical changes and sometimes they've, they've, they've gone against us. So, you know, this is all a learning curve. You know, we've got a right. good squad there, you know. And again, I'm, it's all about getting promotion. You know, you want to start building a squad that's good enough for the Premier League. I'm seeing Wayne Walden saying we're a Premier League team. You know, it's... Yes, I think we're a Premier League team, but in terms of that bottom three, bottom six, you know, let's get there first and strengthen. You know, there's there's better quality in this squad than it was two years ago. But yeah, I don't think think the division this year is as strong as it has been over many years. Absolutely not. You know, I I wouldn't have expected, like we said earlier, I wouldn't have expected Bournemouth to be up there. I would have said the West Broms. The Sheffield United, possibly, although Slav was early and obviously he's, right. he's got his come on. You know, you wouldn't have expected the teams that are up there, QPR at the moment, you wouldn't have expected yeah. them to be there or thereabouts, you know, beginning in the season because I don't think it's as strong as a league as it has been. Mm-hmm. Although the championship is one of the most hardest leagues mm-hmm. in the world to get out of, I don't think anyone's going to run away with it this year. Mm-hmm. But I think if we just step on the gas now, between now and Christmas and New Year, I think them nine points suddenly could become 12 and 15 within because everyone beats everyone. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's a good point, Rob. And I'm glad that you said that. And I actually agree with you. Right now is a good opportunity to extend that lead. But what you also said, I actually spoke to Sam Davis from back of the net last night. And he said the same thing you just said, Rob. This is not a strong championship division this year. It's just not. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for them. It's an opportunity for us 
And, you know, we'll see what happens. But And you've said that, Emilio, as well. So take <clears> advantage <throat> of the situation in hand and, uh, and let's try to extend that lead. Before we move on, I want to actually share some comments from the Fulham supporters because we were talking about Parker's return. This is from James Starkey. I will always applaud Scott Parker. Emilio, this is from your friend Val. Mm -hmm. Hi, Emilio, Rob, and Russ. We need the atmosphere of the Juventus night. As for Parker, he got us up, give a good reception, and beat the hell out of him. I kind of like that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Cheers, Val. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, love that. I and this know. is... And this is from Martin Smith. I think the Fulham fans will be allowed tomorrow night. I just hope Mitrovic shoves a hat trick down Scott Parker's throat. How we got treated by him. A very interesting stuff. All right, guys. Let's I will get keep to an eye on that tomorrow night on the pitch. You know, you know what I'm like. I tend to like observing, you know, seeing body language. I'm going to actually yep. keep an eye on that and see, see that if they applaud each other, they pat each other on the back. Just so you're keen to see some of the body language. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Let's get into this. And Rob, I don't know how much of Bournemouth that you've watched this season because I want to compare what we're seeing with Marco Silva compared to what we saw under Scott Parker, you know, Silva ball versus Park ball. But before we get there, again, full credit to Bournemouth. They've had a very good season. But as I talked to Sam last night, they're seeing some more things that we saw. They're seeing, you know, Sam told me he was expecting – them to play like Eddie Howe. That's what he was expecting. And that's not Scott Parker. And listen, the results are the results. But as I told you, he used the word that actually, when he said this, I knew exactly what he said. He said, in certain matches, the handbrake gets put on, Rob. So oh. I think Bournemouth supporters are seeing a little bit of what we saw, but the results speak for themselves, Rob. What, what do you make of Bournemouth start yeah. to the season. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him a couple of times live, uh, both on the television. And yeah, very much the the Scott Parker type mentality in terms of trying to keep the ball sideways, backwards. Obviously, he hasn't got the calibre of player within that squad, nowhere right. near what he had last season and, and what we've got this season. So he's asking them to do a lot harder jobs to keep the ball. And, and if you looked at their fixtures, you know, I mean, yes, they went, you know, eight, nine, ten games unbeaten before they before they finally got beat. But they hadn't really played any of the big boys, you know, at the top as we, what we're saying are the big boys. Right. You know, he, 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 the odd one here and there. But, I mean, he's got Solanke scoring goals, which Solanke hadn't scored goals for Bournemouth for previous two years. Um, so he's getting a tune out of him. Um, how he's doing that, I don't know, because he couldn't seem to do it the same for Mitro uh, in the 18 months, two years he were there, maybe a, a conflict of uh, personalities is slightly different there. But, yeah, I mean, uh, they're easy on the eye to watch. Uh, I think defensively they're, they're, they're very susceptible, and I think we will get at them tomorrow night. Obviously, the centre half suspended now. Right. Uh, and if Cook plays, he's, I think he's poor, he's sluggish, he's slow. I think our, our mobility and our athleticism around the pitch, both from midfield and wide areas, I think will tear them apart. I hope you're right, Rob, because again, it's really, it smells like it go, it could go in that direction based on what I've watched from them, the injuries that they're dealing with that we could potentially be able to do that, but only time will tell. Emilio, I want to go to you because again, you've had a good opportunity to watch Parker ball and now watch mm -hmm. Silva ball. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the differences that you've watched as we talk about this match leading up to the match, because it is a contrast in styles. You've got to watch how Parker played for a couple of seasons. Now you're seeing Marco Silva. So what do you see? What have you watched in these last three years that really tell a tale of the tape, I guess you could say, between these two styles? Yeah, and I think, you know, I think you know, we, we all, certainly you and me, Russ, weren't necessarily big advocates of Scott Parker. When we, got the, when we got the job, I think we did that show straight, you know, straight as it was announced. I was a little bit disappointed. I didn't know what to expect, but you know what? Right. You got to, you know, you got to respect the the board and the owners' decisions to give him yep. the job. And you know, you you give you give the the manager the best support you can do. I never booed him, you know. Once I've, I said I'm never his biggest fan, but he's there in job, and I'll, you know, he got us promoted. So you know, I think we should, we should have maybe got automatic promotion that season. I think that championship right. division wasn't the strongest either. Every year it seems to be declining in terms of quality, but we should have done maybe done better. We lost a lot of games quite heavily against low bottom six teams, so. It was a bit hit and miss that year, but you know he got us promoted. We, and then we all thought maybe we could do a little bit better in the Premier League. But 
you know, we saw what the stubbornness of his his tactics. He didn't want to change the way he played. The fact, you know, that I can't bear the fact we only scored nine league goals at home all seasons. That, that that really depresses me. That statistic, and I don't think that will ever be beaten. That statistic. I think we'll have that for hundreds of years to come. It's just it's just depressing. And it was what it was turgid going to the cottage. You know, pre COVID. Just watching nil nil draws. How many nil nil draws did we get at home last season? How many times did we fail to score at home? It's just we needed a change, and you know he did his best. You know he didn't. Maybe you know, we've said it time and time again. He probably didn't use the players that we thought could be better utilised and would would give a better fight at scoring goals and just you know trying right. to make a difference in the Premier League. He you know he's very stubborn both tactically and with his selection process, and you know he lived to pay the, for those for those mistakes. But look, he's gone to Bournemouth. I think they're punching above their weight. I think I said at the beginning of the caller, but you know, one interesting statistic that I saw today, and I'm going to just look through the table. It's not surprising to see that they're the they've conceded as many goals as we have. So they're the least conceded, you know, 16 goals for Fulham, Bournemouth, and West Brom. So three of the favourites to go up have all conceded right. the fewest goals. But perversely, Bournemouth are the second highest scoring team in the division, which is you know, if you and look at Scott Parker's. You know, tactics and strategy of the play. You wouldn't have expected him to, you know, their team to be second high scorers in the division. So, I think Bournemouth are getting more out of, you know, of Parker than we did in the in the championship. I think you know, two years ago we struggled. Like I said, three 0 home defeats against Barnsley, Bristol City. We lost Hull City. We got humiliated at home. Mm-hmm. I think Bournemouth. He's getting the better out of the ball. Maybe he's, he is starting to learn from his mistakes and probably knows when. Maybe. to so that's what I'm seeing. So from the few games I've seen from Bournemouth, it's not. Exclusively, the Parker ball we saw for two or three, two seasons. It's a little so, different. It is. I different. agree. He's, he's sticking his neck yeah. out a bit more. He's being a little bit more courageous. Yes, he, I have noticed that. I want to know, give him credit for that. <clears throat> so, and I, you know, I think he's learned from mistakes, and that's what you want from a manager, whether he's our manager or not. You want you, you learn from mistakes. You build on that, and I agree with Rob. He hasn't. He's not blessed with the strongest squad, but look, he's got them to second place. They were top of the sit- table for quite some time, and they're going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. So, tomorrow night's game is going to be. <laughs> Intriguing. It probably has nil nil written all over it oh. by, all, by all accounts. But, <laughs> but then again, what well, I'm, I'm shaking again, his head no way. No. I'm but I'm seeing you. I'm you, seeing you, 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 you tune into Coronation Street, then Amelia. And I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> <watch that. Maybe. laughs> so, uh, but yeah, look, he's getting the best out of that squad, and you yep. know, I think Bournemouth fans, you know, they I think they're all mixed from what I'm seeing. You know, some people yep. are like what they're seeing, others maybe are sitting on the fence. So it's, uh, but you know, they're second. Joint second highest scorers in the division, joint lowest defensive rate. So they've not got yeah. much to complain about. Yeah, you, you can't complain with either of them stats. No. I didn't realize that. And you know, yeah. fair play to Scott. He's obviously yeah. learned by his mistakes mm-hmm. at Fulham over the last sort of two two and a half years. Um, and for a you know, not one of the favourites within the division at the start of the yeah. season to go up, he, he's he's turned a what you would say mm-hmm. is an average type side with a few individuals. Mm-hmm. He's turned them into defensively quite good looking at the stats and and obviously with the amount of goals they scored behind us the the, the second yeah. best in the league so we cannot we cannot over overlook that you exactly. know it's not going to be easy no no absolutely right i'm glad that you mentioned that because that's going to lead me to talk a little bit about metro in just a second but parker i think is getting the most out of this squad and utilizing them so well and you can see it like i said i'm glad that emilio said this they are playing slightly different than they did th- Parker ball for us. It is a little bit different. It is a little bit more aggressive and he is getting the most out of players like Solanke. I'm glad that you brought that to the table, Rob. But, and again, I don't mean this to be Metro versus Parker, even though I'm putting up this graphic here, but I want to go back to this because when you look at, and I asked you this off air, why couldn't Parker get the most out of Metro? Why couldn't Parker get the most out of someone like Niskins, Cabano, Seri? Why were they not really involved and but I, I want to focus more on metro and you know maybe it's a two-way street rob i'm curious your view of the metro situation with parker because i mean he's on fire he is doing tremendous and i think silver plays to his strengths but maybe there was more going on with metro and parker than we know Oh yeah, no, most definitely. There, there, there has to be, and there, there would have been. I'm sure we all, we all, we all know that. We all think that, and we'll all listen to all the rumors. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Mitro started in, in in Scott's plans, and then all of a sudden, while we were getting 
beat, you know, week in, week out. And Mitro is a temperament of a, you know, a Serbian up there that's not getting any chances or any service or, right. you know, he's got his back to the wall. And, 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 and if he were honest, he probably weren't at his fittest at that time. He looked, he looked a half a stone heavier or he's, he's definitely a half a stone lighter or, or leaner this season. Definitely. Um, but yeah, there was a clash of personalities there that went on for weeks and weeks. And, you know, he should have, you know, he should have been a bigger man, Parker, to utilise an asset like Mitro and and try and had an opportunity to score the goals because he was the only one that was going to keep us up. You right. know, we were in March, we were all saying we could catch Newcastle and mm. we were looking favourites to go on that run to do it. And all of a sudden we went completely the other way yep. and never won a game for eight. And Newcastle went on to win three or four out of their last eight. That's you know? right. So we were that close to actually staying in the division and he, he should have been a bigger man to go with his experienced players and Mitro being one of them. And the right. same, you know, let's let's not hide the fact he, he messed Tom Kearney about as well. Yeah. You know, he yeah. played him here, there and everywhere. He dropped him, he played him out right. Good point. You know, you know, two of the biggest wage earners within the club, I'm sure, that were on premiership wages. Whether that had a, a, had a thinking at the back of his mind, I don't know. It shouldn't have done. Um, but, you know, he seemed to not utilise two of the key players who were instrumental the previous two years to give us a chance to stay up. You know, that that's the disappointing factor other than the way he left the club uh, that I would say that Scott, you know, in his early years as his management, you know, he should have learned by it. And maybe he has learned by it. But, yeah, it'll be interesting tomorrow night to see whether they shake hands or acknowledge each other or... <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'd imagine Parker's a fairly level-headed guy, and he would he right. would reach out to Mitro. It just depends whether Mitro's, you know, big enough or stubborn enough to say, you know, uh, you know, it, it'll do it, but it will be a token gesture. I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> I want to share this comment, and I want to go back to you, Emilio, because when I read this, I'm thinking this is actually interesting. I hope the fans tomorrow give Scotty P a good re- reception. I want to say this, I. I think it would be a classy move to do it because this is someone that played for the club yeah, and was a coach for the club. Mm-hmm. Give him a reception because we are a foam family. Maybe that yeah. is the right way to approach yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Emilio. Yeah. No, I said, you know, I've, I've never, never booed him. You know, did some, like I said, many performances we weren't satisfied with, but you know, you've got, I've said it last season, time and time again, you, even the season we got promoted, you've got to give the manager time. You can't keep sacking manager all the time. So you go with the decision from the board, and you you, yep. you you follow the club. I'm not one to boo to boo players or boo the boo the manager. And <clears throat> you know, like I said, whether you like him or not, we've got to give him a warm reception. He's done a good job. He got us promoted first time around. I don't, you know, what more can we expect? Yes, we should have done better. Should have right. got automatic promotion. You could argue, but he still got the job done. And tactically, we 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 beat Brentford in that in that one off final. So incredible. He you deserves know, but, so much credit for that. I'm glad so, you brought you know, that up, Amelia. We can't yeah, forget that. He, he tactically he he did what it needed to count in the games that counted. You know, semi final yes, and, and the final. So, but then again, you know, I'll go back to Rob's point. You know, and you mentioned it earlier, Cabano, series clearly even Loftus Cheek. He's playing in the Champions League and, and assisting for Chelsea against Juventus. So, what is you know, Tuchel doing right for Chil- for Rofter's cheek. That Scott Parker couldn't get the best out of the play. I know he had an awful season for us, but right, he's back playing regularly for Chelsea now. Right. So I've always said, bad players don't become bad overnight. There's reasons for that. Whether mm. it's the wrong system, the wrong squad, the wrong tactics, the wrong formation, the wrong lineup. You're a player with technical quality. And Rob, you you could testify to this. You know, you, you don't become a bad player overnight. It's the way you're set up and the way the team. It's yeah, it, it, it's the man management and the and the attitude right. of the manager and the player. And obviously, there was a breakdown in 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 just not Mitro, as we mentioned yeah. earlier. Cabano, Seri, Cabano looks. He's probably other than Mitro. He's been our best player this season. Unbelievable. And week in, week out. And you can see and these offensive players suits. Obviously, a Marco Silva type of player. So he's got right. players of that type of skill set that suits you know the, the silver ball way of playing. But right. Right. Rob's point earlier, you know, we needed goals last season. We're only barely scoring half a goal a game at home. Take a risk, change something. And, you know, we've mm. talked about this time and time again. But right. Mitrovic, you know, came back from, what, the qualifiers last year? And, you know, they didn't qualify for the Euros because of the penalty miss. His confidence was rock bottom. He had injuries, wasn't starting. Scott Parker wasn't there to, basically, to to, to manage him. And that's the reason the why. Him, yeah. Yeah, and that's what you need. He needs that. You know, he's either sky high like he is now or rock bottom like he was 12 yeah. months ago. Who was his 
you know, that's why I was disappointed with Scott Parker. I thought, you know, he had the, he had the etiquette to man manage and coach these players, but clearly something must have happened in the dressing room. Because yeah, I think I think Silver Silver's obviously a more experienced manager. You know, within the game, Scott's first job. Yep. You know, maybe he's, he's he's handling multi million millionaire footballers. Mm. You know, coming from a coach at an academy at Tottenham to coach at. Uh, uh, Fulham uh, and, and dealing with these players is different being a coach than a manager. When he becomes a manager, you're, you know, you're dealing with these players and it's decision making and knowing when to put an arm around them. And usually you're number two, and he didn't have mm-hmm. an experienced number two yeah. to do that, you know. Whereas Silvers had, you know, the Watfords and the Evertons and play in Europe. You know, he, I know for a fact he put his arm around Mitro first day at training and said, "I'll make you a better player this season. Stick mm-hmm. with me," because wow. there were rumours that Mitro were leaving. You know, yeah. And with Seri as well, probably the same as Seri. Yeah. 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 Seri's yeah. been a, a revelation in the middle of the yeah. park in just keeping the ball retention, which is Silva's game. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's move on with our preview. And before we talk about Foam and how Foam can win this match, let's talk about Bournemouth. And Rob, we've already talked a little bit about this because, and again, I, you know, listen, it's happened to Foam. I thought it would be a huge test for Bournemouth once they ran into some injuries. Well, now they really have some injuries. They have a suspension to Lerma. So their defense is decimated coming into this match. How huge could this be for Fulham? Like you said at the beginning of the show, it has the possibility based on who they play for Fulham to really take advantage of this. Yeah, most definitely they should do. Um, you know, looking at the players that will be, you know, either out of their back four, which I don't think even when they were in there, I, I've seen them a couple of times and I, and I still think they're shaky enough. As much as they've got the second least defensive goals, I still have seen enough in games where, a bit like our two centre us, they do make regular mistakes but don't get punished for them. And that's where we've been lucky as well in terms of, of Tosin and Ring. When they have made mistakes, we've either got out of jail and I think Lerma and Cook and um the, the the back the other two defenders the two fullbacks for them are, are the same so you know it could work two ways you know the two lads who are going to come in tomorrow night to play could come in and have a have a worldy and 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 it can work, work work two ways and we're obviously hoping it's going to work the way of Fulham and we're right. on the front foot and you know that back four won't know what's hitting but it's it but with Mitro up the middle and the two wide players whoever it may be coming at them from different angles and and possibly the number 10 role of young Cavalero has been a revelation in the last two or three games where we all thought he probably wouldn't kick a ball for Fulham between now and January. Um, you know, if we start the game properly, like we have done in many of our last sort of 10 games, we should comfortably go on and win this game. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, easy, but right. we can make we can make it as easy as we want to because we're the favourites. We're at home. We, I'm sure he'll have them revved up to go and win this game because we know if we win it, it's another three points further away from I, I four from third position, but more importantly, it opens up the gap between us and Bournemouth. Okay, right back to you, Rob, because I was thinking about this. I've actually listened to a lot of commentary from Parker from these shows talking about Bournemouth, and I learned on Saturday that basically Parker went to three at the back, probably out of necessity, and he basically in the uh, training session before they basically had only 15 minutes to learn it and they did a decent job. So I'm going to put you in the shoes of Parker. What formation do you play against Fulham? Does it really base around who's available? Yeah, I think so. I don't know what, who, who's the who's the suspect uh, center halves or, or or one of the three that might come in. <clears throat> I mean, he, Scott likes to play four usually, but he, yeah. he may go to a three knowing that but if he does that, he knows our strengths are going to be wide, not only with our two wide players. I mean, the two fullbacks, whether it be Dennis or Tete or whether it be Joe Bryan or or, or, or Robinson and, right. and Caban on the left. I mean, he's, he's they're going to be coming from all angles. So I, I'm not really bothered whether he plays three, four or five back there. Okay. I think they're, they're, they're going to be up against it. Um, you know, we are or we should be on the front foot from the first minute. And if we score first, as we've done many, many games this season, I think their record of being the second defensive back, I don't know how many goals they're behind third, but you know, I'm hoping that we can put a dent in that tomorrow night, and I'm pretty confident and uh, that we'll go on and win this game. I wouldn't say comfortably, but I'm, I'm pretty confident <laughs> we will win it. Okay, excellent. All right. To finish up the show, I'm going to ask the guys 
who are their key players for this match, how does Fulham win this match, and we'll end with our predictions for this match. Okay, Emilio, right over to you. Who are your key players Friday night for Fulham against Bournemouth? I think the whole squad, to be honest. I think we. I think I want to just touch on Ross' point. You know, let's let's get get at them from the off and treat this just like any other game. Just because Scott Parker is your former coach, it's a top of the table clash. We were, we were playing ball, well, West Brom a month or so ago, a couple of months ago. What was the reason we had top of the table clash? Then we thumped them three 0 So let's be honest. At the end of the day, all we've got to do is treat Bournemouth just like any other club. Don't give them as much respect as maybe we we may consider giving them and play your normal game. You know, we play our normal game. I agree with Rob. We we will probably win tomorrow night, but it's. If our players are fully fit from this virus, you know, against Preston, yep. it still looks a little bit lethargic, not 100% fit. If we can get our, you know, pretty much our full squad strength team starting tomorrow night, we'll be good enough to play. So to me, it's a whole squad. We play as a unit, we, we create chances, we'll score goals, and, and we get at them. As long as Mitrovic keeps his head, I think there was a comment from one of our listeners earlier saying, let's make sure Mitrovic doesn't, you know, you yep. can show the passion, enthusiasm, but just keep your head under control. Don't get yourself sent off doing something stupid. But it's it's ninety minutes. We're good enough to beat this team, and you know we you know shove it back up Scott Parker's backside, like I said. But as far as I'm concerned, treat it like any other game. You know whether it's Bournemouth, Millwall, Cardiff. Right. It's a ninety minute game, winnable game. We're at home, and you know I don't expect anything less than three points tomorrow. Okay, how about for you, Rob? Do you agree with uh, the assessment of uh, Emilio there? For keeping yeah, really, yeah. really, it's a team effort. This really isn't focusing on, say, Mitro or Cabano or Seri in the middle of the park. This is yeah, really I mean, a I think team. It, it can be a team game or it could be, but I, I think a key player that could win us the game tomorrow, and I think he's, he, he, he can do it, is, is young Cavalera. I think the number oh. 10 role he's playing. Mm-hmm. I think if he, on his game, he's, he's such a natural footballer. And I think we've seen the, the 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 fruition of him the last couple of games and the goals and his his hunger. I think if he starts tomorrow, we don't know the team yet, but if he starts tomorrow in that role that he's just behind Mitro, I don't think Mitro will be the match winner. I think it, I think all the hype will be blown up too much. And I think as long as we can Tosin and, and Ream can keep Solanke quiet, I think match winners will be from other areas of the pitch, whether it be young Cav. Or, or Cabano, I think the, the the unsung players will win us the game tomorrow. Okay, and that goes right back to you now, Rob. How does Fulham win this match? The approach, is it really what it's been, really just get that early goal? Is it just take it to them? What, yeah. If you yeah, were I mean, Silver, Marco Silver, 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 what, yeah, what would you Silver, want to see? Yeah, Silva doesn't play any other way. You know, he's, he's, his team talked to us from the first minute is go and win the game in the first 10 minutes. And you can see that in the first... 12, 14 games this season, we have attacked games sort of aggressively from from the kickoff and and more times than not, we have scored. You look at the amount of goals we've scored early in games, look at the amount of goals we've scored from corners, which we've been abysmal (laughs) for many, many years. So, yeah, tomorrow's key. I'm not bothered if we don't score in the first 10 or 15 minutes. You know, the game is 90 minutes. You know, we're, we're at home. We're expected to win the game. Um, he will have them on the front foot, no no doubt. And, you know, we'll approach the game no different than we did away from home in Preston last week. The first 30 minutes was absolutely outstanding. The only disappointing thing is we went 1-0 up. We probably should have got the second to kill it off. And we let, you know, the second 60 minutes, we were poor and we were fortunate to get a draw. And there's not been too many games other than the Coventry, the Blackpools that you could say Fulham have let us down. Um, and I wouldn't expect them to let us down tomorrow. I would, I would expect us to win the game tomorrow. I'm saying, two, I would say two 0 at least. Okay. okay, is that your prediction? Should we jump ahead? Two-nil. Yeah, I'll go. Two-nil. I'll go two 0 okay. <laughs> okay. And if you're watching live, feel free to share your prediction because I'll be getting that from the Fulham Shadow in just a second. Emilio, over to you. How does Fulham win this match? Do you agree with Rob? Yeah, I think as I was saying earlier, I think just just treat this any like any other game. You know, just you know, there's there's obviously a bit more spice added to the game. It's a top of the table clash, and obviously Parker back at the cottage. But treat this just like any other game we played this season. We have played twenty games this year. Treat this no differently. I don't want don't give them the respect they deserve. Put your heads down. Play your normal game of football, and you know, and and, and let the football do the talking. I think there is, you know, Cavallo has looked lively the last couple of games. Absolutely. Rob's games. right about so, that. I agree with that. Yep. You know, and, you know, we've got enough quality there to, to win this game. But let's also be clear, if we don't take three points, it's not the end of the world. We're still nine points clear from automa- in the automatic promotion place. 
We've still got over half a season to go. We've got plenty, there's plenty of other opportunities. So let's not be downbeat if we don't get the three points. It's, I think we will win, but it's not the end of the world. Let's not get too despondent. Let, you know? Let's have a show on Monday. To, let's play this. Uh, that, don't get downbeat on the way back. Let's play that back on Monday. <laughs> I will. I will. It's a journey. This is a long season, right? It's, it's you've yep. got Christmas coming up, fixtures yep. coming in thick and fast. Yep. You know, let's focus on yep. just doing the job. He's Marcus, both a young manager. Let's not forget Marcus Silva's not. Right. He's a young is a young manager as well. So he's still got lots to learn as well. So okay. overall, it's got to be an, an enthralling game, like I said at the beginning. Intriguing, enthralling. We should win with the home advantage, but you know, let's not underestimate this Bournemouth team. You know, no, I agree. The, Punching what above you, their weight. What, what do you, what do you What's reckon? What's your prediction? Give me two, what one. do you reckon, him, Russ? Go on. Okay, he said two, two to one. I'm saying two one, Fulham. Two one. Okay, and I could see where Emilio's going on that. I'm gonna go with my favorite score line, which is three to one, just because I don't like two to one. So I'm just gonna say <laughs> three to one. But I think Emilio could be right. I hope Rob is right that that we actually, you know, went by more than a few goals, and maybe it's. Bigger than that, but I think it's going to be a hard match. I don't think it's going to be easy. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for Bournemouth. I'm talking about the players. I, I This is a team that's playing for their manager. Say what you want about Scott Parker. If you don't have good feelings about the way it ended, I understand that, but I respect what he's done down there, and I'll just say that right off the bat. I totally, totally respect it. And, and I also respect the Bournemouth supporters. I you know I've been going back and forth, and they've been very nice to me. And uh, I wish them the best, and uh, we'll see who wins, loses, or mm-hmm. I hope it's not a draw, but you never know. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Not the so, end of the world if it is a draw, and that's the thing. That's no, my point. At the end of the day, no, we're, still, not, no, you know, we're no, in pole yeah, position. Yeah, you know? yeah, the only disappointing thing, if it's a draw, it will be the manner of the draw, whether we, mm-hmm. we should have won the game or we were yeah. lucky to get a draw. Mm-hmm. That's A draw is always is two ways, in my opinion, yeah, as a true, manager or a coach. True. You know, what, what, you know, how did we... What did we achieve not to get the draw? What could we yep. have done better to, you know, to win the game? So yep. the draw, like you say, it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But then, you know, depending on how the game went in the 90 minutes is, is your definition of what a draw is, whether it's a loss two points or a valuable game point come the end of the season. And the key it's, thing here as well is also, the key thing here is the out, whatever the result is, you, we dominate and thrash them like we did against West Brom. What would that do to their confidence? But likewise... Right. If we end up disappointingly losing at home, oh. what will that do psychologically to Fulham? So, it's, it's that's why I'm saying that maybe it's not going to be as clear cut as we think. I think both. I think we've got to go at them. We're at home, treated like a normal game. But I see the psychological side of here, where a win or for or a loss for either team. What does it do psychologically with Christmas coming up? I'm, I'm just just think of that side of thing. I don't know, Rob. No. You've been in similar situations as a player. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we bounced back very well after the, uh, you know, the, the the loss at Coventry and the mm. and the, the third international break. We came back and we went obviously on the right. on, a, on a, an unbeaten run and then continued it again after that. So, you know, it's um, you know the three the three the three international breaks has hasn't been great for us. Although mm. the last one was obviously very good, but um, you know now we've got a clear you know clear run of games till Christmas and then it's a hectic mm. period. Mm. It's going to be a squad. We've got we've got the squad in depth. I think more than some of the teams in and around us. So, mm. like you say, tomorrow night's a it's it's a big game, but it's not it's not the be all and end all of the yeah. season. Whether we yeah. win, lose, or draw. Well, I agree with that, Rob. But I want to go back to you. you brought up something very interesting. And you talked about West Brom. Do you think West Brom's loss to Fulham, the way it happened, has very much affected what's going on with them now. And that is something to just look at for Fulham. You just mentioned Fulham were able to rebound from a bad loss. West Brom, not so much. So is that something to, you know, and again, I'm talking about for Fulham, for Bournemouth. I'm glad we're talking about this because I think that's something, the size of the match, and again, it's only three points, but it could be. Yeah, it's the uh, damage it does. The damage it does afterwards. Yeah. Psychologically, like I mean, the psychological yeah. damage that it could have on the team if if it's a, a draw. Well, that's one thing, but the team that loses, it could leave us a, a psychological uh, mark there, Rob. Yeah, I, I think we've got more experienced players in our squad than the rest of the squads in the division that we can because we've been up and down with a lot of these players in the last sort of two years. I think they can deal with a defeat like Coventry or Blackpool and bounce back fairly quickly yeah. and put a run and, and put a run of games and wins together. Um, I don't think some of the other teams, West Brom definitely haven't had that. 
And I think yep. Silva's a type of manager that, you know, when it's when it's gone, it's gone. Let's build on the next game. Um, okay. And I think he's got the squad backing and, and, and the morale behind the scenes, by all accounts, is second to none. So, you know, it, 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 it doesn't doesn't. It doesn't phase me that if we did get a, a defeat or a draw, that I know we bounce back next week and go on another four, five, six game unbeaten run on the trot. You know. So- okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'm going to share some predictions. This is from Steve Turner. Three nil. Colm Bugler says four to two. Rick Kerr. I can see a four nil for Fulham. Rick, Got I it. hope you're right. I hope you're right. <laughs> Steve Turner prediction three nil scores. Mitro Wilson Cabano. Rob, you're going to like this one. Rob Wilson knows. <laughs> so I, I thought I would share that. Let's see. My friend Wayne here says Harry Wilson will be the man for me. Yeah, I, just on that, I think Harry's been a bit in and out, you know, as much. Yeah. I think, he, I, I think he's, he's got a lot more to offer than he's showing. I think he's been a little bit too inconsistent for me. When he's good, yeah. he's very good. And when he's average, he's very average, if you know what I mean. That's a great yeah. point. It's a great point. And, and I've heard that about him. In some of his uh, former stints, they when he's yeah. on, he's on. When he's, he's off, he's, he's off. He's quite a temperamental player. You know, he's, yeah. if, he, if he gets fouled or it's not going his way, he gets booked or sent off or he loses yep. his rag. You know, he, he, his body language is a lot, his demeanour, how he plays. You know what I mean? He, yeah. And then he makes a darting run and, and, and sticks a nice goal away, you know. So <laughs> I think we, we need to get more out of him because he's definitely got more in his locker. Okay, yeah. excellent. My prediction is two to one to Fulham, same as the shadow. I love that. Let's see, <laughs> Martin Smith, four to two. I heard it here first. Okay, and listen, uh, I want to thank Wayne. Well, Wayne has been watching all of our videos, and thank you for saying that, Wayne. That's very nice of you. Steve McIntosh says one one draw. Oh, I don't know if I can. Come on, Stephen. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I want to share this. My mate is an Albion fan, said when we play them, well, that's playoffs then. So, <laughs> again, that's very interesting. Let's see, Matt, Mats Carlson. I don't, think, I don't okay. think that's probably made the playoffs. Yeah, well, it's, uh, they're struggling. We'll it's not, they're not scoring, are they? Goals have dropped. No, down. they're not scoring. No, no, they're not scoring. All right. Fantastic show, guys. Before we go, final thoughts over to you, Emilio. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow night. It's going to be cold. So I'll be down there. We'll probably see the Fulham Shadow. In in the streets behind the cottage tomorrow night, straight after the game. But yeah, we're looking looking forward to it. Again, let's let's start. It's not a nil nil bore draw, but it's okay. You know, you know, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good reset. I'll try to get there a little bit earlier than I normally do, so it'd be good just to get start to feel the atmosphere in the ground. Okay, Rob. Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm not going down. I, I, my son did say to me on Monday, he said, oh, do you want to go down Friday, Dad? But unfortunately, I've got uh, a big webinar tomorrow afternoon at three oh. o'clock, which. Um, it, it, I couldn't get out of, so it's a, it's a case for watching it on the television for me tomorrow night with my wife Karen and obviously my my son Adam and, and grandson Tommy will be will be cheering the boys on and um, we're hoping that we'll get the result that um, you know that we're we're all hoping for and then it takes us into you know the next few games going into the Christmas period where we've got some very winnable games coming up after mm. tomorrow. Okay, excellent, Rob Gordon Davis, uh, your teammate. Fulham legend, you know, he couldn't be with us tonight. And I, I know it's hard to put words in your mouth of what he might think. What Just knowing Gordon, what what do you think he's thinking about this match? I think, well, it'd be, I, I know for a fact he would be absolutely uh, uh, overjoyed at the, the, the chances Mitro and the goals he scored this season. And <laughs> the amount of crosses that we're getting in, whether it left or right. Yeah. Some, some yeah. good, some bad. Obviously, more good from the wingers rather than the fullbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, if... If Robinson can can brush up on his crossing and picking people out, then I'm sure there'd be plenty more chances for. But I think he'd be more he'd be more um, pleased that he's actually Mitro's getting bodies around him, yes. i.e. midfield I... players, whether it be young Caballero or Cabano. He always harps on to the days of of me joining him or Dixie and, and says it all the time. Mid, breaking for midfield, and we haven't had that for years. We've never had a midfield runner come to support the, the strikers, you know. So. Um, yeah, he'll be. Uh, I think he's traveling south because he's moved. He's moved to the north now of of, yep. of of England. So I think he's traveling down tonight to to break the journey up, ready for tomorrow night's game for his uh, his entertainment. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm sure he'll. Uh, I'm sure he'll log on at some point tonight or tomorrow to to view whether we've mentioned his name. Well, <laughs> we've done that now. We've mentioned Gordon, and uh, we wish Gordon 
could have joined us. Uh, I always love getting... I think in the back of his mind as well, he, he'd be hoping that Mitra don't keep scoring to get anywhere near his, uh, <laughs> his, 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 ta- his, his goal-scoring records. <laughs> That's very interesting that you say that. But I'm glad that you said what you said, Rob, because I, I know how much when we we're doing these shows that Gordon was talking about service, lack of service, mm-hmm. lack of service, scraps. He kept saying scraps. And I think he would have a different tune with what's going on this season. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Okay. Well, listen, this has been a great show and we will obviously have a show to talk about the Bournemouth match. I look forward to that and let's hope Fulham win, but let's wrap this up for the Fulham shadow of Miller Dino, Fulham legend, Rob Wilson. I'm Russ Goldman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk.